Okay, um, well, welcome. Um, so what I wanted to present on is using Google Apps Scripts, which is um, JavaScript based um, to create easy web apps. Um, wait, so wait, you... wait, we need oh. to record, sorry. Oh, my end says it's recording. Is it? Oh, oh, okay, never mind. Well, we're gonna have a recording of me saying we need to record. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. These are informal recordings anyway. Yes. <laughs> Um, so I guess I'll show you why I ended up playing around with this, and then I'll show you some of the code to make it happen. What I was hoping to do is if people want to um, create an app script, like web app as we go, um, we'll do it kind of like live code. So I can post into the chat room the code if you want to paste it into your app script, and then you can do the same thing. So it's really quite simple tool that's been developed for creating quick, quick little web apps and stuff. Um, but then you could always move to a server um, and put into a regular JavaScript file, or you can just leave it on their system. So I'll share my screen, uh, get started. Okay, so you should now see, um, this is a web app that I created a couple of weeks ago. Um, and this is kind of what got me interested in the topic. So we're developing a platform for a research grant and we wanted to make a quick mock-up of what the web um, interface and how it would work, would look like. Um, the, the final one is gonna be a, a Django website. Um, it's a little more complicated than this is. But I was able to put together a quick web app that would allow um, us to show some of the potential participants, some research labs that we're working with, kind of how it would look and how it would work. So it's not the best um, user interface design, but that wasn't really my goal either. Um, so what this does is it lets you get a file um, and you can select any file. I'll just grab whatever this is. And um, without uploading the file, it will create what's called a digital hash for it. Um, and that's a unique identifier for the file. So let's say this was data from 3.22.22 file. And I hit the button and it gives me the hash value for that file. And again, this is a unique identifier. Um, and what I can do then is this is all saved in a Google Sheet. Um, since this is a Google Apps script thing. So this is the file I just uploaded. It has the hash, the file size. And I can then check to see if a file that I have is already in the database. So like if I click on that one, I can pull it up and it says, yes, it's already in the database. Um, and this is again, for a different project, but I wanted to build a quick, easy version of something that could do this. And Google Apps Scripts gave me an easy platform for doing that. And so that's why I thought it might be a good thing to share here, um, kind of how do you build these easy web apps? Um, again, it's probably not something you would wanna have as your main final product, but um, it does little things like it tells you here at the top that, this is a Google um, platform. You can't take this little bar off because that's how they built the system. So all this is done in um, Google Apps, Apps Scripts. Um, and just to let you know, there's a, also a pretty good sized community that supports this. So this is um, just their Google group and it's fairly active, I'd say like six to 10 questions a day come in and people are really good about answering it. The, run, the person who runs the community also is the person in charge of updating the backend software at Google. So they actually have really good answers to the questions people pose. Um, so if you have problems, this is an easy way and it's very active. So within 24 hours, you would get an answer to your question. 
But just to give you an idea of how easy these are to build. Um, and again, if you're at a computer and you want to go ahead and follow along and do this, um, then what you could do is just go to script.google.com. And since you have a Google account, I assume, well, I guess you have a GW account, so you would have a Google account. Um, it'll automatically log you in and then you can start a new project. Um, so I already started a new project. I guess if I go to, it, they hold the projects in your Google Drive. Um, and then you just click on new project and you can start a new project. Um, just like that. And you end up at the same place that I was before. So all their new projects come up with a function that then you can fill in. You can change the name of the function too. So, um, so as you can see here, you can run the function and this tells it which function you're running. Um, if I change the name of the function to my GW coders or something, and I save it, now it changes. And if I have multiple functions, it'll give me a pull down list of which functions I want to run. So one interesting thing about Google Apps Scripts is it only allows you to have two different types of files. So there's this file, the code GS, um, which is um, Google Script, but it's pretty much the exact same as JavaScript. It's just a slightly more limited version of Java because they took some functionality out of JavaScript. Um, so that's why it's GS and not JS. Um, but it's pretty much, you can just think of it as JavaScript files. There's just some JavaScript functions that it won't run for security purposes. Um, and the only other type of file you're allowed to add is an HTML file. And so we'll go ahead and we'll add an HTML file and we'll call it index. So now we have two files. We have the one that will contain most of our JavaScript. Um, and then we have the HTML file, which as you can see is a HTML file. So this is what will look like for the website. Um, and it, again, it starts you off with the base of things that they want it to have so that there's consistency across it. So now what we do is, um, the first thing we have to do if we wanna create a web app, you don't, and you can create non web apps to run in Google scripts too. Um, so I think last year, maybe I did a talk on um, how you can update calendars and stuff from Google Apps Scripts. Um, and in those, you aren't building a website, you're just adding functionality to a Google Sheet or to a Google Calendar. It also integrates with um, pretty much all the Google tools. So you can use things to automate things related to a Google Doc or to a Google Slide. Um, or even to Google Forms. Um, it runs through their API. So it's, um, you can manipulate all of them through code rather than having to manipulate through the user interface. But they also allow you to do web apps, which is what we're looking at today. So to do a web app, the first thing that you have to do is you have to tell it that you're going to link it to um, an HTML file. So we use what they call a do get file or function, um, and then they return it, whatever happens then to an HTML. So it uses what they call an HTML service, and it's going to output that to the HTML file that we named index. So this is pretty much just linking what we do in the GS file to what happens then in the HTML file. And this is largely the same, no matter what type of web app you're developing, you first have to do this linking part. Um, and what I can do is, hopefully I can pull up the chat room. Huh. Let me see how I can get the 
chat room up and post to there without stopping sharing. Oh, there it is. So I posted to the chat room. Again, if you want to start one of these and do it as we're going through, and you don't want to try to read all my code, you can just copy and paste it out of the chat room. Um, and that might be easier. And if you have any questions, please just interrupt and I'm happy to try to answer them too. So now let's go to the HTML file and we'll start to build what we want is the website that we're gonna have for this. And this is just gonna be a very simple um, little web app that will use an API to um, do a quick function um, and for what I decided to do for this is it's going to be a predict your age based on your name um, application. So, and I'll explain that, that in a little bit too, where I came up with that from. So if we're going to get people's name and then they'll hit a button and in return, they'll get an estimate of what their age is. We have to create first our input where people will put their names. So we want to have an input into our HTML. They're then to type in text. So we tell it's the type text. And we have to name it with an ID. So name input. And what this will do is this will create the button um, that allows our app to run. Actually, what might help is I can show you the completed version. Let me pull that up. So this is what we're building. I would put in the name John, then hit predict the age. And it says people with the name of John are on average 58 years old. Whereas people with the name of Zoe would be 50 or my name, Ryan, 44. Um, so this just uses a little API. So this is what we're building as our web app. So as I said, we have to have that input box is our first piece um, so that we can get the people's names. And then what we wanna do is have a button so that people can click to um, put in what is there um, to click to get the age back. So we just create a button in HTML, we call it button and then we end our button and then we want the place where the output is going to show up. So we put in a div for the output. And again, we just have to name it. And then we can put text into that. So I'll put all those into the chat room as well, if you want to copy and paste those into the body of your HTML. So now what we've done in the HTML is we've created the visual interface that people will see that will look like this. Which is a good starting place, but we also want to make it more interactive than that. So let's go back to where our JavaScript files will be, or most of them at least. And we'll actually write the function that is going to um, make all the magic happen. So we'll want a second function in here and we'll call it get age. And then within that function, what I wanna do is I wanna have a call to an API that will do the backend work for us. Um, so what we're gonna use is there's this website called Ageify um, and it's just a easy to play around with API it looks like this, um, actually. Hold on. So this is where they talk about it. And they give, for example, the API works by using the URL and you put in question mark name equals and what name you want to have. And when you do that, then you get a JSON file in return that has the name, the estimated age, 
And I don't know what the count number is. It must be the number of people with that have tried that name um, as one of their trial ones, because it's a very big number. So if we change it back to, so we, the count goes down significantly. So that's what we're gonna play with um, in order to get the return variable for our little web app. So what we wanna do is we wanna have a variable, we'll call it the URL and it'll be age of five plus the name um, and we're going to get the name from here. So we're going to pass the name in. So whatever the person writes in the input, then that will be the name used in the URL. And then we're going to get a response from that URL. Um, and we're going to make that into a variable. So when we get that response back, when we fetch the URL, so we'll call the URL. It will come back with that JSON file. So once we fetch it um, using this little piece of code, then we'll want to parse it using JSON. Um, and then the only thing that we really want out of it then is the age. So I don't really want the name. So I'm just gonna get from the response the age key the value associated with it. And then I want to return that age. So that's just our quick little function. Um, and again, I'll post this into the chat room if you wanna copy and paste it in. A quick little function that takes the URL, fetches the JSON return from it, parses that, then takes the age variable and brings us the age. So if we put in John and it says 50, then we grab that number 50. Uh, I'm sorry if you explain this, uh, but for that, that website, it does it automatically give it into the JSON format or like, did you have to do anything to, to get it in that format? No, that's the only format that it provides it in. So like if I put in Sammy, it always just provides it in the JSON format. Uh, now, some APIs, you can request different formats. Um, so like I was working with a different API the other day and at the end of each one, I had to write like type um, JSON if I wanted JSON as the return on it. Um, they had four or five different formats you could return in, but this one only returns in the JSON format. And I'd say that's the most typical um, that because you can parse it so fast, most websites use JSON formatting has been my experience. So yeah, um, and where I found this was I actually just did a search for fun APIs. And there are people who have like a list of like 20 fun APIs to play around with to learn how APIs work. Um, and we can talk more about other APIs um, at some point too. But I thought this would be an easy one just to show this example of how the Google Apps scripts kind of take this information and work with it. So now um, we still have one issue that, so on this one, we have um, our HTML that will build the button so I'll have the input field, then I'll have the button and I'll have a field for output, but we haven't told it what to do with any of those. So we have no way yet to move the information from the HTML over to our function in our JavaScript file or GS file so that the name can come in, we can add it to our URL, we can parse it, then we can bring the age back into it. So we do have to add some script to the bottom of our HTML file as well. So we'll start out, um, we have to tell it that what follows is going to be script. And so then we'll have to have an end script down here too. You can also, by the way, I don't have any CSS in this. Um, 
I should say that since you can only create two types of files in Google Apps Script, you either have to embed your CSS into your HTML file, or you have to have your CSS housed somewhere else and just call it in from someplace else to apply the CSS. So if you wanted to do something fancier, then you have to um, have a CSS file somewhere or put the CSS right into your script, like into your HTML file. And you can do that, you can add CSS, like you could add a CSS block down here at the bottom. Um, we won't get into that today, but uh, it took me a while to figure that out. Like, how do I get my CSS? If I only have these two file types, um, as you can see, they really are the only two they allow. You can only add HTML or script files. So, okay, so what we wanna do then, and again, this is, if you're not familiar with JavaScript, um, this is fairly typical JavaScript type stuff. Um, but JavaScript is really easy to pick up, I found. Um, so it wasn't the first language I picked up, but once I got playing around with it, it's pretty easy. So what we can do is, what we're saying here is within this document, which is what we're in, I want to get the element by ID. So what I wanna do is get the button element. So since I had ID'd my element as button, now I can call it button down there. If I change that, let's say I have multiple buttons. If I have button two, if I want to call button two, then I just add the two. So whatever the ID is, you just use down there. And I want to add what they call a listener to it. So it's going to look at that element and it's going to listen to it. And if it gets clicked, so if someone clicks on the button, um, then what I want to do is do predict age. So that's going to be a function that we're then a write right now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll create a function here that will run whenever someone clicks on the button. And you could do this. It doesn't have to be like event listeners don't have to be clicks. You can also this look for changes. So if we come back to here, when I selected a file, um, like I select this, all of this stuff appeared, not because I clicked on the button, but because I made a change to it. And so once I selected that file, then these things would all get updated. So there are many different types of event listeners you can add with JavaScript. Here, we're just using click, but you could do other things as well. And you can apply it to things other than buttons, but buttons are the most typical thing to apply it to probably. So then, so when someone clicks on it, it will run this predict age function and now we want that to do something. Um, maybe what I should do is make sure I close this off. Um, yeah. So I'll go ahead and paste that into the chat room if people want to catch up with me on your own. Okay, so now we're gonna write a function um, that actually does this predict age and it will call the other function that we wrote that uses the API. So the first thing if we're gonna predict the age, um, what we're gonna have to get is the value of the name that the person gave. So whether you put in John, Zoe, Ryan or whatever. So again, what we're gonna use is we're gonna have a variable, we're gonna go to the document, we're gonna use the get by ID, and this time we're gonna get whatever they put in for the name input, and what we want from that is the value. So that will be the variable that will capture the value of what people put into it. 
Now this next part took me a little bit to figure out. Um, so it can get a little tricky here. And I'll explain the logic kind of once we've run through it. So in order to do something with that then, we have to do a Google script run is what they call it. And what this is going to do is it's going to pass to this code JS file over here. And it's going to use the get age with name function for that. So it's going to go to there and it's going to look for this function. And you could run it just like, well, you could run it without this, what they call a success handler. So you could run it um, like this. But what we want to do is put in this, what they call a success handler. And what this will do is it will pull back the returned value if it is successful. Um, so if the function doesn't run or brings back an error, then it won't continue to run the function. So this is kind of an error checker um, of sorts. And how this, um, so let's say we came, this is our API. And let's say instead of putting in a name, I had just put in some numbers. It was in a string back a null age. And I want that same type of error to get picked up. And so with this success handler, if it pulls back a null, it's not going to run the next part of my function. Um, so it's kind of an, a little different way of thinking about how it works, but um, it works really well for doing this type of thing where you want it to only return if it has success. So let me put that in. So now we have this success handler. Um, and so it will run, um, and then if it is successful, it will run on success. Um, so the handler says whether or not the function ran and returned a non-null result. And if it does, then it will use that in the function that I named. So I called it on success. You could call it whatever you want. Um, and so then what it will do is it will return the age. So whatever was returned from here will get put into here, and then we will apply it down here into our, within our function. And so this is then, again, we get the output by its ID, and we tell it to put the HTML in, and we're going to put the age in there in the HTML. So that essentially is going to take this age variable and it's going to put it right in here because this is the inner HTML of this div. So that's what this inner HTML does is it tells it to put it here. You don't have to put it there, but that's what this does for us because that's where we want it to be. And that is it. That's all that we had to create. And now when we run this, um, let me save it. Then what we're gonna end up with is this right here once again. So now we've written it, we're pretty sure it's gonna work. Um, we have our two files. So now we have to deploy it. Um, and that's what this button up here does for us. So we can hit new deployment. And we then deploy it as a web app. Um, so these are other things you can create too. You could create an API uh, add-on. The add-on would be like an add-on to Google Sheets or something like that, or a library that Google Docs uses. Um, we're then create a web app and we're then call it GW coders 22 because that's the file. Um, 
who has access, we'll say anyone, um, this who executes it. So anyone can use the web app, but it's going to execute in my Google Gmail account. Um, you can also set it up so that it works on the other person's Gmail account. Um, but then you have to move this to anyone with a Google account because it would execute using the resources of their Gmail account, basically. So I just said, leave it as mine. I hit deploy, authorize the access to it. Uh, That's it. So now I copy the URL, come down here. There we go. I type in Don, predict age. 38 is the prediction on it. So that's a real quick, as you can see, way to move in just, what was that, like um, a half an hour? not even 20 minutes, we were able to create a quick web app that will allow us to test stuff out. Um, and you can do a lot of pretty interesting things with these um, in terms of linking them to like a Google spreadsheet. So you could um, also come over to here and add in that whenever it returns a name and an age that you keep a copy of those in a Google Sheet um, if you wanted to see what people were searching. Um, so yeah, you can do all kinds of pretty interesting things pretty much on the fly as you're going um, without that much code. Again, it's primarily just JavaScript. Um, so if you've done any work in JavaScript, I'm sure all of this looks very familiar, but even if not, it doesn't differ that much from Python or even R, you're just variables, loops, stuff like that, all the common things. Um, yeah, if it's of interest in a couple of weeks, I can do some more on this. Um, and talk more about how to link it to like a Google Sheet or if you wanted to. Um, they also allow for you to like have a place where you can store passwords and stuff. So like this API that we're using didn't require um, a key or anything to get in. Um, now you could add it, I guess I'll show you that too. So. Like with this API, you get to use it, I think a thousand times per day, you can call it. But if you want to do more, you have to buy a subscription to it. And then you have to add your API key. Um, but you may not want to make your API key public to people. Um, and they have a way of doing that where you can use what they call properties. And I could show that as well. Um, so there's lots of different things that you could do, but I thought this would be a good introduction to just building quick web apps um, that allow people to interact. Um, I could see this being useful, for example, if you wanted to do something more complicated than just a survey. Um, I, Google Forms does great easy surveys, but if you get something more complicated, where like people who enter that they're in a specific age range might get differing questions that are calculated based on something. And you want to have those calculations. Um, you would have to have code in order to make the calculations. And Google Forms can't do that for you. Um, so this would be a way of building something like that and then you could easily get it. So if you're building out like a small experiment or something, uh, this would be an easy type of tool to use to do that in. And I think, 
yeah, that's all that I was going to present for today. To go ahead and stop sharing. I'm happy to answer questions um, or share other resources. I was trying to think of a way to like call another script inside that. Like, let's say I have a bunch of complicated calculations in like a Python script and R script. And that code is just up on GitHub somewhere. Could I call that script, send it somewhere to, I'm sure there's like, I'm trying to think of like chaining together other things. Um, oh yeah, people definitely do that. They, you can link, yeah, you can call scripts from GitHub mm -hmm. um, and then execute them there is my understanding. I haven't done it, but um, I was actually reading about it a couple of days ago, thinking about how you could integrate it with Colab. Like if you wanted to run something really complicated on Colab um, and then call the, re the return into here, um, it turns out you can't actually do that because Colab won't let you execute externally. You gotcha. have to execute from within Colab. Um, but yeah, you could bring scripts in and then execute them here within your script. Um, you can also, I didn't mention too, you can set up triggers. So like if you have a script that you want to have run, um, oh, this is a good example of that. Um, so every Sunday I run a script in this that calls the API for our Slack group and then updates who gets emailed announcements from GW coders about the upcoming sessions based on who is in the Slack group at the time. So if people pull out of Slack, then I want their emails to come off. So every Sunday I have an app script that runs, goes to the Slack API, brings back our user list of emails and puts that into a spreadsheet, which then gets used by another app script to send out the calendar invitation reminders the day before we have a meeting. So all that is done in app script. Um, so yeah. you can do that type of thing pretty easily. I'm thinking of, I'm, I'm trying to uh, see if I can't come up with a way to like, like, so my, my approach to this exact tool you just made would be to just to make a shiny app because I know how to use that, right? But I'm like, I wonder if I can basically do that through Google Apps Script, like if I can hack away at it and somehow have some complicated, like like a dashboard type thing where I can have dials that I move things and I get a, a chart that is generated. Maybe I could run the code over in GitHub or something, the R code, but then just display the result through the through this um, app script or something. I don't know. I'm trying to brainstorm ways to do that, but. Um, yeah, and it's not a perfect yeah. option for a lot of things because again, you're always going to have that like thing at the top that says this is, yeah, say, like this little bar at the top that says this application was created by another Google user. Um, I haven't been able to find anybody who's figured out how to take that off. So you wouldn't want to develop like a website that runs in this, but it's really good for quick things. Um, mm -hmm. Or if that doesn't really matter to you, um, like if it's not a big public showing thing. Um, I could see, for example, if you're using, like you wanted to create an mTurk task for people to do, this would be an easier way to create something for them that they could then link to and use. Yeah. And it would value you more manipulation than like Google Forms where it's just for a basic survey but it would allow you to actually manipulate the data and change what different people see happen um, mm -hmm. without having to develop a whole backend website and database. Um, linking it to your Google Sheets is super easy. So you just uh, put in the ID for your sheet basically, and then it can just start dumping stuff into your Google Sheets. So you can use Google Sheets as your database essentially without having to get into MySQL or anything like that, which can be intimidating for people. Yeah. 
Okay. Any other questions or anything? Or if so, I'll, if not, I mean, I'll stop recording. Yeah.